Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's here. Today, we're going to talk about MLB service time. What is it and why is it important? Last week, I did a video on the MLB and MLBPA coming together, coming to an agreement. And the big thing when it came to coming to that agreement was service time. That's what the players wanted. And I've gotten a lot of questions about what exactly service time is, what's important about it. And so we're going to go into all of that today. Okay, so the first thing is that Major League players receive service time for every day spent on the 26-man roster or spent on the injured list. And service time is gonna determine when a player is eligible for both arbitration and then free agency. Okay, so a couple of numbers to understand. A major league season consists of 187 days, 162 games, and then 25 off days, all right? A player needs 172 days to equal one year of service time. Now, once you hit that 172, you can't get any more service time than one year in a season. So even if you're there for 173, 174, 175, it doesn't matter. For that year, you get one year of service time once you get to 172 days. So if you're sent down to the minor leagues, you're not receiving service time. If you're just in the minor leagues, you're not receiving major league service time. Now, the reason why this is really important is because when you're on a team, right, your first six years, you're controlled by that team. Okay, and we're not even going to get into the minor league part of it, but technically when you're in the minor leagues, that's a whole different contract. This is when you finally get to the big leagues, right? So you could play in the minor leagues for like four or five years for an organization, then finally get to the big leagues. And that team still has now control of you of six more years while in the major leagues. So the first three of those six years the team can pay you basically league minimum. Well, they can really pay you anything as long as it's above league minimum, which right now is 550,000, right around 550 thousand dollars and that's what most teams are gonna are gonna pay those players in those first three years now years four through six you become eligible for salary arbitration which basically means that you can negotiate with the team for how much money you feel that you're worth now if you can't come to an agreement say you think you're worth 15 million and the team says no 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 you're worth 10 million and you fight back and forth well you can go to an arbitration hearing where somebody is basically going to hear both sides of the story and then decide who wins does the player win and receive his 15 million or did the team win and he's only going to receive 10 million now after the sixth year the player becomes a free agent and that's when the player can finally make like tons and tons of money right you can sign your huge deal if you're a good player you can sign a really big deal for a real lot of money okay that comes after those six years now the goal of a player when it comes to the business side of things is to get to first get to arbitration as fast as possible because you don't want to get paid a league minimum year after year and then the second goal is to get to become a free agent as quick as possible right so you want to get through those six years become a free agent so you can sign your big multi-million dollar deal now the, the the other thing to understand is something called a super two okay so i took a few notes on this i want to explain i want to read it because it gets a little bit confusing so at the end of each year major league baseball is going to identify players that ended the prior season with more than two years of service time but less than three years of service time and you also they're going to identify players that have at least 86 days of service that prior season now these are the players that basically just miss arbitration right they're in between two and three years okay now they take those they take the top 22 percent of service time from those players that qualify with that criteria the 86 days and then between two and three years they're going to take the top 22 percent of those players and those players are going to become arbitration eligible okay now this is done so that basically teams can't manipulate your service time right they can't keep you down if this was not the case then teams could just keep you down. You've seen this happen before, it happened to Chris Bryant, it's happened to a couple other players where teams go, man, uh, we don't want this guy to become arbitration eligible. So we're going to keep him down for a little bit longer. We're going to wait and then we're going to put him up at the right time. Well, now you can still kind of do that, but the top 22%, right? Now you've got to kind of guess if you're a team like, okay, where is that top 22% line going to fall? And so teams can still hold you down, uh, but they've got to, it, it makes it a little bit tougher for them to do that. Now service time also uh, dictates your pension. So full pension is 10 years of service time. And then 
every year less that you have of service time, you're going to get a, a less less of a pension. Okay. So for me personally, I, I I don't even know my exact service time. I have one point something. I have a little bit over a year of major league service time, and so my pension is going to be a lot smaller than if I obviously have played longer. If I play ten years, you get full pension. Okay. I'll still get something, but um, service time does determine what you get for a pension. So that's also important. And then another thing that service time uh, determines is, is 10, five players, 10 and five players. So let me read this also because it's a little long. Um, so players with at least 10 years of major league service time who have spent the past five consecutive seasons with the same team earn 10 and five rights. Uh, and under these circumstances, a player can veto any trade scenario that is proposed. So, it so essentially 10 and five basically gives you a no trade clause in your contract for veteran players. So this is why service time is really, really important. And again, I know a lot of people when we start talking about the business side of things, some people get mad, but but let's face it, baseball is a business. And when you're talking about millions and billions of dollars, right? Baseball is a billion dollar industry and you're talking about players. Yes, I know, league minimum 550,000, like that's a lot of money, right? But in the grand scheme of things, if you're looking at it, throughout a whole career when baseball careers can be very, very short. You're 550,000. Yeah, that's great. That's a lot of money. But when you have the chance to make millions of dollars and set yourself up for life and set future generations of your family up for life, we're taught, I mean, this is really, really important. And this is where players, you know, they want to, like I said, they want to get to arbitration as quickly as they can. And they want to get to free agency as quickly as they can. And so this is why it was really important when, when the MLB and the Players Association were deciding on these things that are going to happen if this season coming up doesn't get played at all, or maybe it gets played a little bit. Service time was the big factor because this is going to determine whether players become arbitration eligible and whether they become free agent eligible, um, which again can be the difference between millions and millions of dollars. Um, I'm thinking of uh, like Mookie Betts. I remember Mookie Betts. I think he made, I think he made like 900,000 or so. I believe it was right around there before he was arbitration eligible. And then when he became arbitration eligible in his first year, I think he made around like $10 million, which might've been the high for a first year arbitration eligible player. I'm not hundred percent sure. You guys can go look this up, but just think about that. That's 900,000 for before arbitration eligible to $10 million first year eligible, right? So that, that's a lot of money. And so players are, again, players are trying to get there as quickly as they can. So hopefully this makes sense. Let me know in the comment section below if I forgot anything, missed anything. I think I covered everything. But let me know if you have any questions. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you to our patrons on Patreon who help support the channel. We really appreciate all of you doing that as well. And that's all we have. We'll talk to you later.